Well, hello. Oh, he's risen. Sorry, I just wanted to do that because it looked too fun. Um, if I haven't met you, my name is Cherie, and I am very excited to be here. I'm very nervous, and I just thank you for the grace and the love already I feel. Um, and I'm just going to pray to start. Dear Lord, I just thank you for this day and what this means and what a um, beautiful time to just stop and remember that you are risen, that we can declare that over our lives. And I just thank you for everyone who's in this place. There's no accident that they walked in these doors. And anyone who's online or watching, I just thank you that um, you love us and that you uh, want us to just to soak in all the love that you have for us by sending your son to die and rise again. I just thank you for this message. Amen. All right, the greatest comeback. It's very exciting. Um, I thought just to get us warmed up into this that uh, we would just play a little bit of a game, you know, just something a bit fun. So I thought to get our minds thinking about comebacks, I've collect collected a few little bits and pieces, things that over the years that have come and gone, things that we might be happy that came back, things that we're not so happy came back. Uh, so we'll start with the first one. So I think it's on. Ah. Oh, we got it, we got it. Okay. We got it? Sorry, we got it. All right. So we've got some pictures up here. The Polaroid camera, camera classic that's come back. Scrunchies. Uh, I personally love the scrunchie and that has come back into my life and I'm just thankful. The marble chocolate. People think that's a new chocolate, but that was old and that came back. So happy about that. Skateboard. Yeah, I, I love a skateboard. Can't ride one, but it's all good. Um, Lego. I think it's always been around, actually. So don't worry about that one. <laughs> um, okay, I'd like to do a little survey. Who is happy that the mullet made a comeback? Ah, oh, a few people over here. Interesting. Uh, who's, who's not happy about that? Yeah, I thought so. I thought it was funny for a week, and then it's still here. So uh, it's interesting. Okay, um, now we're thankful that these have not made a comeback. So we've got some interesting fashion choices with the leg warmers. Uh, the low jeans, that just looks so uncomfortable. Um, I personally never had milk delivered to my door, but that just seems gross. So uh, happy about that. I'm happy slow internet hasn't come back. That dial-up tone will never be not a memory in my mind. Um, anyone grow up with porcelain dolls? Uh, the, I don't know how I slept as a child. <laughs> Knowing that that was in my house. <laughs> just, it's just looking into your soul. Let's move on. Um, okay, finally, what we wish would make a comeback. Uh, movie stores. Who has not experienced movie stores? I feel sorry for you. I'm sorry that you have not experienced a movie store. Running in with your pyjamas to just deliver. You might not have made it, but you made it. Um, the snake on the little Nokia phone. Love those. The other day I was driving and I saw petrol was $1.59 and I thought, that's so cheap. That's not cheap. <laughs> Bring back slow petrol. Now, this was really interesting. When I typed this into Google, the first thing that came up was modesty. So, just, you know who you are. Um, <laughs> look, I, I feel personally victimised. Um, and maybe someone, that's all you needed to hear today. Just bring a bit of modesty back into your life. I'm not going to look at this section of the room, but uh, that's usually where they are. <laughs> All right, well, these are great things that have come and they've gone, but they just do not compare. They do not compare to the world's greatest comeback, and that is Jesus Christ. Yes, yes. Thank you. So Jesus is the world's greatest comeback, and the only reason he came back was for you. There was nothing in this world that he came back for besides you. I'm sure Jesus had some really cool sandals. Maybe he had like a nice robe that he left behind. Maybe he had a favourite cafe. But he didn't come back for anything that this world had to offer, but he came back for you. So if Jesus is the greatest comeback, what does that actually mean for us? How does that actually affect us? So Jess read out the verse that we're going to look at, and I'm going to just break it down and just highlight some really key things. And then we're going to just really listen to maybe what the Holy Spirit is saying in these, this passage. So just to give a little bit of context, um, Jesus had found the disciples fishing. So Jesus had died and he had risen and he had appeared to the disciples and they didn't really recognise him the first few times. But this is the time where um, they recognised him, then they broke bread and they recognised, oh, Jesus is alive, he's come back. But he found them fishing. And then he says to Simon Peter, do you love me? 
And whenever something's in the Bible three times, it means it's really significant. You mean, it means you really need to pay attention. So Jesus has asked Simon Peter three times, do you love me? And he's confessed, yes, I do. Which actually cancels out the three denials that Peter made just before Jesus' death. And then he says, feed my lambs. And he says that three times again. And then the final thing he says is follow me. I've made them coloured, quoted it so you, could, you can tell. Um, so I've done the work and of what this is, what's actually being pulled apart here. And I really believe there's three things here. The first one is Jesus is basically saying, do you believe me? Because he appeared to um, the disciples and the disciples at first didn't really recognise him. They could have been like, oh, that's a ghost. It's a figment of my imagination. But the fact that they recognise, oh, this is an alive Jesus. They recognise that he's alive. He's no longer dead. Then when he says, do you love me? He's basically saying, will you give me your heart? And so the disciples say, yes, yes, we will. And then finally he says, will you feed my lambs? Will you walk where I've walked, knowing that you are no longer alone? And then when he says, follow me, he's basically saying, will you have faith? Uh, My dad's a fisherman. My dad's in the house. Hey, dad. Um, And when he goes fishing, he goes for a long time. And I know it's a long time because I've gone fishing (laughs) with him. And it's a long time. And it'll be a long time before I go fishing again. (laughs) I don't understand fishing. Um, So, but my dad clearly does. And he's got all the gadgets and the things to just keep his fishing habit um, going. So I don't really get it. I get the water's pretty, the boat seems nice. And every now and then when you do catch a fish, it is thrilling. But that's a lot of hours you have to put into that. So I don't really personally understand. But the disciples, they knew fishing. This is what they knew. This is their livelihood. They knew that sometimes you catch fish, sometimes you don't. And when, they were, when Jesus had died, it made sense for them to go back to fishing because that's what they knew. That's how they knew to make a living. That's how they knew to spend their time. So it makes sense that they went back to all they knew. They just lost their best friend. They just lost the man that they'd been following and doing life with for three years. Their life was forever changed. But when he had gone, it makes sense to go back to their old life. So I really think um, this is something we can learn from because, yeah, Easter's all good. I love Easter. It's been such a build-up and it's so cool to be able to have like three church services in one weekend. I don't know if I could do it every weekend, but it's good. No, I could. Um, and it's good to stop and reflect, wow, Jesus came back for me. But what about Monday? What about Thursday afternoon or Saturday night? What about when all the chocolate is off the shelf, all the hot cross buns are no longer selling? What What about when we forget? It's so easy to go back to what we knew before. And I've written some things that I think we can easily go back to. And then it might not just be physical things, but actually the way we used to live. So the first one is we can go back to what we knew before Jesus. Yes, Jesus is alive. Like he's given me hope, but it's easy to forget that and go back to a life without hope. You can go back to old habits, just the way you used to let life happen to you before you let Jesus show you how to live. We can go back to old ways of dealing with things. Maybe we don't pray. Maybe we don't read our Bible because there was a time when we didn't do that and we try and lean on our own strength. Maybe we go back to mindsets that God has broken or we go back to relationships that aren't good for us. We can go back to believing our situation is hopeless. And we can go back to not seeing the resurrected Jesus in the prayers we pray and the dreams we've dreamt in our everyday life. I understand why the disciples went back. The disciples went back to what they knew before Jesus. And they, maybe it's because he wasn't with them physically that they went back. But when Jesus said, follow me, sorry, I'll go back. Jesus said, follow me. He was actually saying it to us as well. At the beginning of um, Jesus meeting the disciples, he said to them, follow me, leave all your nets, leave your lives behind and follow me. And they just embraced that. They're like, yeah, okay, that makes sense. And so they followed him because it was a physical following. They ate together. They went from town to town together and it made sense to follow them with their lives. But when Jesus had died and rose again and he said, follow me, they knew that he wasn't going to be with them physically anymore. So this follow me meant something completely different. But what Jesus had done when he died on the cross and he rose again, 
is he gave them a hope for a future and he was promising that you can follow me and you actually don't need me physically anymore. The same power that rose Christ from the dead is now going to live in you. So follow me. This is a powerful, powerful challenge and such a faith step that scares me. When God says, follow me, Shuri, I sometimes want a physical reminder. Okay, what does that look like? I'd, I'd love Jesus to walk in these doors and say, okay, I'll follow you. I'll never leave you. But because of his Holy Spirit that he left when he died and made it possible for us to access and talk, speak with our Father, it means we actually don't need Jesus physically with us, that we can follow him. From our perspective, Jesus is the greatest comeback. Can I hear an amen? Amen. But this is actually not the greatest comeback from his perspective. From his perspective, the greatest comeback is that we would come back to him. I was really praying about this. A week ago, I had this message and I was like, I'm good. I've got a whole week. I'm good. And then um, <laughs> I, something wasn't right. I was feeling really drawn to keep praying and, and seeking God. And I was like, What's hap- something's missing from what you want me to say. And so I was praying and I was really seeking God. And I was kind of reminded of how I do this often. I'm kind of going about my life. And then I'm suddenly so aware of I can't do life on my own. I need God. I have tattooed on my arm. All I need is you. But I so often think I don't need him. And I felt like he was reminding me that, yeah, you need to keep coming back to me. That from your perspective, yes, Jesus is the greatest comeback, but I'm there, my arms open wide, crying out for you to come back to me. That is the whole picture. That is the fullness of this comeback, is that Jesus came back for us, but that we would come back to him. And so I tried to articulate this, and I love writing. So I've written a little blurb, and I'm going to read it. It's on the screen. How many times I have had to fall on my knees in remembrance of Jesus being my saviour from sin, my God above all the gods I make for myself. He is the reason I can call peace, peace, love, love, and joy, joy. He is the definition of life. He's like coming home after a long holiday. How many times will I have to remember Easter? Every day. Every day I will have to come back to my first love, to come back to my forgiver of sins, my hope and redeemer. Every day I will have to remind my soul that no other love compares, that I could search the world and still not find freedom like I do in the name of Jesus. This day is about remembering Jesus came back for you. But this day is also an opportunity where we can come back to him. I'd really love us to just sit in that to sit in that realisation that, yes, Jesus came back and that's awesome, but I think sometimes we can disassociate and really believe that for our friends or our family because maybe they seem like better people than me. Maybe they don't know how the things I've done or the things I've thought. Or maybe I've come back, I keep coming back to God. I keep coming back and surely he's sick of me coming back. Surely he's sick of me being on my knees asking for forgiveness But God is standing there, arms wide, stretched. There's never too many times that we can come back to him. There's never too many I'm sorry's. There's never too many confessions that we can make. Jesus is always there, arms stretched, ready for us to come back. And that's what he's, that's where he's satisfied. He's not just satisfied that he died and rose again for you. That's such a beautiful and powerful truth that we can hold on to and gives us hope but he's wanting us to come back to him. That is the full picture. That is the whole story. And so how do we come back to him? How do we come back to this amazing God that sent his son to come back for us? Well, I think we can follow what the disciples did. I think we can look at their lives and see they came back to Jesus um, with the certain, these points that we mentioned before. So maybe we can let Jesus ask you, do you believe me? Will we recognise that Jesus is alive? Not just alive for someone else someday, somehow, but he's alive for you. Will we recognise Jesus not just alive on a Sunday or alive at Easter time, but alive in the prayers you've been praying for like 20 years 
alive in the situations that seem dead and hopeless because He is alive. He's alive in our hopelessness and our brokenness. Will we believe that actually the the same power that raised Christ from the dead lives in you and your situation? Do you love me? Will we give him our heart? This is something I'm so passionate about because my heart is constantly being pulled in every direction and soon Jesus becomes lower and lower and lower on the list. And something feels out of order because I'm, I'm constantly chasing all these different loves, but they just do not compare to love, my love for the Lord or His love for me that allows me to love Him. So do we love Him? Is He the first and the number one? And this is something that I know I personally have to every day claim. I have to, have to claim that God, you, you are the greatest love. Whenever I feel jealous or something seeps in that just is not, not of God, I know that something's out of order in my love. So do we love Him? And will you feed my lambs? Will we walk how he walked, knowing that we're not alone? It's so great. So many people have brought people to church on an Easter Sunday, and that's awesome, and I love it. But what about on Thursday in Coles? Will we feed the people? We need to share this good love, this story. We need to share this hope with the world. On Tuesday, I was at Munya Chapel, which is Salvation Army run rehab. And there was a lady there that was graduating and it's such a joy to see that and be a part of that. And she said something to Laura that was so quick and almost under her breath and you could have missed it. But she said, Laura, thank you so much for telling me that God loves me because I wouldn't have known. And that broke me. I just, I couldn't stop crying because I just thought, how many people out there don't know that they're loved? How many people don't know the love of their father for them? We need to tell people that they're loved, tell people that they have a plan and a purpose, that they have hope and freedom in the name of Jesus. And finally, will you follow me? Will we follow him with our lives? Will we take those steps of faith? And maybe someone walked in here with no faith they felt. They felt, I don't even know why I'm here. But in the Bible, it says, faith as small as a mustard seed can move mountains. And that's not faith in our own strength or the muscles that we try and develop. That's God moving those mountains. But he takes our tiny little mustard seed of faith and moves mountains. So will we have the faith to, put our, to trust him? I'm going to ask the van to come up. I'm going to leave this on the screen just a few more minutes longer. But maybe today there's, there's one of these points that is really standing out to you. Maybe it's all of them and that's really cool. But I'd, I really ask you to, to ask yourself, what is it that I need to come back to? Maybe I need to come back to believing that Jesus actually is alive. And maybe you don't feel it. Maybe you don't feel in your situation or your circumstances that Jesus is the alive Jesus that he claims to be. But maybe you need to declare. Sometimes we need to declare something before we feel it. Or do you need to say, God, I love you. Actually, you need to go back to that right place in my heart that I love you. You are the number one. Or maybe we're challenged when Jesus says, will you feed my lambs? Will we go out to the world? Maybe there's someone on your heart that you've been praying for. God's been stirring in your heart to go and speak the name of Jesus to them. And finally, maybe he's saying, just follow me. Just put that tiny seed of faith into me and see me move the mountains in front of you. See what I can do with your small faith. So this is a great day to celebrate that Jesus has come back. He is alive. He is no longer dead. But this is such a great opportunity to come back to him. And like I said, it doesn't matter if you've come back a million times. Come back again. It doesn't matter if this is the first time. That's awesome. Come back So we're going to spend some time in worship. And this day isn't a sad day or a morbid. This is a joy celebration day. This is a day where we can come back to our Father. And we're going to have people up the front and you can just pray. You might want to just pray in your seat or pray with the person next to you. But also take take courage and take a step of faith saying, hey, I want to come back to this love. I want to come back to this Jesus. He's come back for me and He's there with His arms stretched wide waiting waiting for us to come back. So yeah, we'd love to pray for you and we'd love to um, yeah, minister to you. So if that's you, I'd love you to come forward. But uh, we're just going to let the worship team lead us in this song.
Let me pray. Dear Lord Jesus, I just thank You that You are the greatest comeback. That all these things in our life that come and go, they do not compare to You. That You are the greatest love story ever told. And we just declare today that we want to come back to You. You're not there with a judgmental look at us. You don't look at us and You're not condemning us with all this hate. You love us. And I pray that for everyone in this place, that something is stirring in them to come back to You. They don't even know what that looks like tomorrow. But today they can make that step saying, I want to come back to my Father, come back to my first love. Lord, I thank You for Easter. I thank You that it's this time of year that we stop and we reflect. But may this not be just today. I pray this affects our Monday, our Tuesday, our every day of every day of the year. I thank You for these people. I love them and I love Your church. And we just thank You for this day. Amen.